Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm really excited about today's guest. He's coming from the land down under, Jim Fuller, and you check out his social media. He's got quite an impressive um, work. He's a conscious communication coach. And so today is going to be talking all about communication, leadership, culture, resiliency, and he's got amazing stories. So Jim, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Chris. It's nice to meet you. And thanks for having me on your show. Um, tell people, you know, your backstory. I, I'm always curious how people came to be doing what they're doing and we'll jump right into it. Yeah, I've been running my own coaching practice for over 10 years now. And uh, it kind of came off the back of in my previous role. In, in I was in a senior leadership role uh, with a, an international organization. And we engaged a coach to come in and run a weekend of work with the senior leaders here in Australia. And I just loved what he was doing, everything he was talking about and all of the insights that he had. It kind of blew my mind, actually. And when I met him, I decided that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't realize that um, the universe you know, took my, took my call and, and put it all into action much faster than I thought. And uh, a, a, a kind of um, string of events led to what most people would call a midlife crisis um, and it was mm. it certainly was hard to go through at the time i lost my job i lost my marriage lost my house i lost all my belongings uh, mm. i kept my two boys i've got two sons and i kept my sons in a 50 50 week on, on week off arrangement with their mum so i had my boys but apart from that and about a hundred thousand dollars of debt i didn't have anything else um, but i decided to that that was that was a sign so to speak, and I decided to start my coaching practice. So I went and studied human behavioral profiling and NLP and coaching and all the, the pieces that go with it. And I started my own practice uh, 10 years ago and luckily have been able to not look back and uh, and build, you know, quite a successful life for myself and my sons. I love, because uh, I love, um, and what's interesting is uh, I've always been interested in how people take concepts uh, like communication. That's kind of like the bedrock of how we function but then you know you incorporate concepts such as conscious and intentional and awareness it kind of brings awareness to those subtle aspects so talk about like what is conscious communication um how it intertwines with intention awareness uh connection all of that yeah the i mean the title of my book the art of conscious communication the reason that i that i chose the word conscious for the title and then for the, the bedrock of the work that I do and, and certainly there in the book is quite literally to be more conscious of something is to be more aware of it. So the more conscious we are of anything, whether we're conscious of our body in a moment or conscious of um, somebody else in the room or, or conscious of anything. So when we practice mindfulness meditation, it's really a practice of observing whatever we can notice as consciousness. So the more aware we are of the communication itself, and communication really is, well, I mean, it comes from the Latin noun communicatio, which means a sharing, not a telling. <laughs> communication is <laughs> not telling someone something. Right? Communication is a sharing. And the, and the verb communicare, which means to make common. So communication is when there's an idea or a concept or, or some information that we are making common. So you and I come to an understanding. It doesn't mean we have to agree on everything, but at least we understand each other. That's communication. And so conscious communication is that we are more aware of the communication itself. Quite often us humans uh, in, in dialogue or in, in a conversation at least, we are so consumed in our own sense of ego, our own sense of identity, which means we are quite closed-minded. Um, we're <laughs> we're self-serving. We're really just trying to get our point across. And we're not we're not so aware of the communication itself. You know the other people involved and the nuance and and perhaps the reason why this communication is happening in the first place. And to practice and it's a mindfulness practice as well to practice an awareness of the bigger picture and what might be the higher purpose of this communication and how can I how can I loosen my grip a little bit on on my agenda and what I think should be and, you know, just listen more effectively and and share more effectively, you know, so so we can communicate <laughs> better. Yeah, I love I love this. And um, what's interesting is uh, I left corporate world, you know, seven, seven years ago now, 2016. And I just it just amazed me all the 
the status games, the book, the corporate, like the bully, these kind of subtle or talking over, you know, kind of, it just amazed me, you know, that people treated each other that way. But what you think is better to go into a workplace culture or is it better like more people are just basically saying, F this, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to, you know, go start my own business, you know, work for myself. What do you, what are you seeing? We need, we need both. We're, we're, we're a team species. <laughs> you know, we only <laughs> evolved off the Savannah Plains through our ability to, to socialize and work together in teams. We need each other. And so there'll always be organizations of people. And within those organizations, we sort ourselves into teams so that teams can work together to, to get things done. So, I mean, I mean, if everybody left, if everyone left the corporate world and said, I'm going to start my own consultancy, um, there'd be no one to consult to. You know? <laughs> It'd just be, a, just be a world of individual coaches running around trying to coach each other, um, which is yeah. kind of funny. So, no, th there'll always be organizations and there'll always be teams and groups of people and, and therefore then there will always be culture, as in, you know, organisational culture, and uh, which is how people relate and, and get along or not, how they communicate. And like you said at the start, Chris, communication is the foundation of our ability to be effective in everything that we do, you know. I mean, even if you're working on your own and you're a creative, say, you could have the most amazing idea in the world. I mean, Einstein could have had his, his genius ideas around the theory of relativity but if he didn't have a way of communicating those ideas they would have meant nothing you know and so if you're working on your own and you have a wonderful creative idea it's in your ability to communicate that idea that will be the manifestation of that and the value that that might then bring to the lives of others and so communication really is at the foundation of of any thing that we do and it, it's funny you know the reason that i wanted to to focus on communication in the last few years is that after thousands of hours hours of coaching people both in you know in their professional and personal lives it became pretty clear that more often than not when people are struggling with something it's in the miscommunication whether it's a husband and wife or whether it's a, a leader and a team they're tripping over in the communication like two people that are in love with each other and they love each other but they're fighting and missing each other and they're just and from the outside Side, you can see it. You're like oh wow you guys are actually on the same page but you're not on the same page and it's only because of the miscommunication so yeah i think it's pretty important yeah the other thing i find very fascinating is um individuals that travel early and um they get like uh or they they have really unique experiences that makes them more open to communication so you know you were backpacker now you're a corporate leader and you've traveled to remote culturally different place uh, how did that help you as a, as a leader yeah well you touched on it right now massively you know I was fascinated through my late teens and right through my 20s even into my early 30s I was fascinated with getting as far off the beaten track as possible when I was traveling I spent most of those years with a backpack and and I wasn't really interested in going to cultures that were similar to mine you know so I grew up in suburban um, city here in Australia and very similar to America in terms of the culture and the, the Western way. So I wasn't interested in traveling around America. I was interested in Pakistan and China and India and Bangladesh and all through Southeast Asia and, and you know, more through the Middle East and places like this that were really yeah. different. And at the time, I, it was just, to me, it was just because I was adventurous. <clears throat> but with the benefit of hindsight, looking back now, I think I really was fascinated in in humans and human culture and difference you know and i used to i still do i love connecting with people across these divides of cultural difference you know and and then finding something that we have in common and and being able to connect i really, really love that you know can i can i tell you a, a little story about one oh, of yeah. those many connections oh yeah absolutely so i was on this was in 1998 and I was in um, North Pakistan, um, traveling on my own. And I used to travel very, very simply. I, I looked like a poor man. I looked quite simple. And I also made a point of trying to travel as respectfully as possible. So when I would go into a new country, I would learn some of their, their common language, their phrases, so I could get by. When I, when I walked into Pakistan from India, I'd already bought the kurta pajama, the traditional shirt and pants that the men wear. 
Mm-hmm. And so I walked in there already wearing their clothes and saying assalamu alaikum and I had a beard. And you know, so I was trying to blend in as much as I could. And I was sitting on this bus and we were traveling a, a local public bus up in the mountains of um, North Pakistan. And it was the week after the American government had just sent cruise missiles to try and kill Osama bin Laden. This was back in 1998, so chronologically way before 9-11, a few years before yeah. 9-11. And it was after there had been a terrorist attack on, an, on a U.S. embassy in Africa. And, mm. and I think Osama bin Laden put his hand up and said that was me. So they sent cruise missiles into North Pakistan while I was there, <laughs> and I didn't know. <clears throat> and then I was sitting on the bus and I was chatting with young Pakistani man who was a university student and I could converse with him because he spoke a bit of English because he was at university and he showed me the front page of the newspaper and it said jihad has been declared right? so that's when mm. that's when the when jihad was declared on the front page of the newspaper the local newspaper and we were talk- talking about it anyway he was talking with me about how we're the same and he's he was a religious man I'm I'm not religious, but he was. And he said to me, in, in the eyes of my God, we're all equal. And he said, if I cut your skin here, and he pointed to my arm, and he said, and if I cut my skin here, we have the same colored blood, he said to me. And that really touched me in that moment. He looked me in the eyes, and I, I had a beautiful spiritual connection with another human being who grew up mm. in a completely different environment to me me has completely different religious ideas spiritual ideas than i do we could not be more different in terms of environmentally but we looked each other in the eyes and we saw each other and we connected on a deeply beautiful spiritual level Um, and that i don't know that that there's there's a lot in that for me it means a lot you know i mean if we could imagine i'm sounding a, a bit like an idealist and a hippie now but if we could all remember that connection you know and allow the differences to be what they are and harness the power of diversity rather than fighting with each other geez the world would be a different place wouldn't it oh yeah yeah i agree i think uh this the the whole world consciousness is i think before covid i think covid basically sh- shook the world you know told it to wake up and um you know the way people treat each other um a very powerful story just how we connect you know we're all spiritual human beings the other question is talking about uh, this uh idea of personal resilience because how does that factor into communication and culture and connection yeah that's a really lovely question chris you know i think well so resilience is our ability to bounce back from adversity you know, resilience is our ability to maintain our, our energy levels, you know, so that we've got the energy to show up each day, especially through tough times. And when our resilience is low, when we're struggling, the, the, more, the, the more an individual is struggling, quote unquote, whatever that is for them, whether they're suffering mentally, or emotionally or physically, the more someone is struggling, the less capacity they have to, to be there for others, become more and more sad. So when someone's energy levels are low or or mentally or emotionally, they're not feeling great or they're struggling or they're suffering, it's harder for them to be in conscious communication with someone else because they're they're really concerned about their own survival in that moment or or they're consumed with their own suffering in that moment, which is an interesting paradox because that's part of what creates the suffering is the self obsession. So when, when when we can develop our resilience, which we can do, there's there's daily, simple daily practices that we can do to um, improve our resilience. The more resilient we are, the more okay we are with ourselves and life, you know? And the more okay we are with ourselves and life, the less consumed we are with our own stuff, the more available we are for others. I can be in a conversation with you, and if I'm not sitting there struggling or suffering, if I'm just quite okay with life in that moment, then I can really make it about you. I can really listen and and be curious as to who you are and where you're coming from and what do you mean by that, you know? So I think resilience is an important part of being able to communicate. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And kind of like um and when you uh when you've been through thick and thin, you kinda of, you know how to um you you come from a place of more understanding and more awareness of, you know, individuals 
and people are different yeah. and uh, yeah. geez, you know you're more open-minded so uh, yeah you've got some yeah i think you're right you know if you've if you've been through some some really hard tough times your ability of, for compassion for others who are struggling is certainly there yeah absolutely how do you how do you how do you maintain your own personal resilience so there's daily routines well the first thing the, i think the first place to start with resilience is perspective because the way you mm. look at any determines your physiological state of being in that moment and your physiological state of being then determines your energy output efficiency especially your mental emotional energy output efficiency you know if you're looking at a particular situation situation and your pers the perspective that you're taking on that situation is that it's dire and and there's no hope and there's no options it can't get any better and and it's terrible if that's your perspective then your physiological state of being you know you'll be in coming from a state of fear the amygdala might be firing you might be in fight or flight the sympathetic nervous system switched on you're you're stressed you're worried um you're emotionally not feeling great all of that takes a lot of energy, <laughs> Just burning a lot of, lot of energy, right? You're going to wear yourself yeah. down. But if you choose yeah. to, and, and it's a choice, if you choose to look at that situation from a different perspective where you're start, starting to think, well, what might be possible? What might be some solutions here? Or actually, this is not as bad as I thought it was. Actually, this is okay in this moment. I'm actually okay in, in this moment. You change, change your perspective Activate some mindfulness meditation, right? So just going to a place of observation. Parasympathetic nervous system activates. Your state of being becomes calm, physiologically calming down. Your emotional mental state comes to a place of equanimity, right? So you're not freaking out. You're calm and, and okay. And you're then conserving energy, mental, emotional, physical energy. right? So you're becoming more resilient. So long way of answering. The first thing I think that's important Important is perspective and by the way even if you think that you're born a, a pessimist or you're born naturally negative and you think you're hardwired and you can't change we know that's not true now research shows us that with consistency over time looking at something from a positive perspective you can change your wiring so to speak your neurology you can change it to become default optimistic right? so that's great news mm. because optimists live longer have better um, senses of well-being they love their jobs more they have better relationships i mean all the all the research is there you can go and look it up so you can ch change to become an optimist which is great but then on a more practical fundamental level my daily routines for resilience every morning when i wake up the first thing i do is meditate so 20 minutes to 30 minutes of mindfulness meditation um, i use a i use I think this is going to sound like a commercial but i use a supplement called ag1 used to be called athletic greens um, it's uh -huh. wonderful the best supplement natural organic supplement that i've found so i, I uh -huh. have that for my gut health um, then when i have my shower at the end of my shower um, the last 60 seconds is full full cold like full <laughs> blast cold water yeah. <laughs> then and as my um, dopamine levels go up from the cold water then i'm yeah. saying my affirmations because when we say affirmations when we're in a dopamine peak state the neurons um, associate more quickly with each other so that's the whole point oh. of affirmations is that you're brainwashing yourself to believe you know so my affirmations <laughs> i'm strong i'm healthy i'm calm you know i'm disciplined whatever i'm wanting to brainwash myself into uh, and then throughout the day i have created a habit of pausing i call them pause moments so in between tasks if i'm you know for example when you and i finish this conversation and I close my laptop and I go to the kitchen to make a cup of tea. In between tasks, pause, take a breath, and then continue, you know. And these little pause moments, deceptively simple. You might think, oh, that's not going to do much for your resilience or for your well-being. Wow, Chris, that's the, it's the most powerful habit I've created is pausing often throughout the day. And it, they become these little micro recalibrate back to your center, back to your place of equanimity, you know. And it's... Mm. A really wonderful habit. Anyone listening who wants to t take something away from this conversation, if you can create yeah. the habit of pausing often throughout the day, it's a good one. Interesting. I read uh, somewhere, like especially the uh, Wimbledon athletes, when they between um, exchange, they're always in the back and they're they have little habits like they're counting the strings or something, and 
and I've always wondered, but it's actually what you're talking about, this micro resets, and it, it's actually very powerful, which is really, the, the other question is this um, idea is, why do you believe a mindfulness meditation practice is so important? I know you alluded to it, but kind of expand on that, and, we'll, and then, uh, you know, we can close out with how people can follow you, check out your work, etc. Yeah, sure. A mindfulness meditation practice is, uh, well, th think about it like this, right? Your whole experience of everything is in your mind, right? So we receive all of this information from our environment through our senses, both internally and externally. So messages from our body, um, sensations, uh, emotions, but also <clears throat> externally. So things that we can see, taste, touch hear, smell all of this information we receive in bits of information so the light entering through the pupils and then it comes through and it, it travels through the optic nerve as bits of information right and and the sound waves as well and then we represent yeah. all of this information in our mind as this wonderfully detailed hallucination <laughs> essentially <laughs> it's a controlled hallucination but it's a projection in our mind so our whole experience of everything is in our mind. And the quality of our mind and the state of mind that you're in at any given point in time hugely favors your experience of quote unquote reality in that moment. So if the whole if your whole experience of life is in your mind, the state of your state of mind matters. The health of your mind matters. And mindfulness meditation is like going to the gym for your mind. You, you you're developing the ability to go to a place of observation where you can observe anything that you can notice without being identified with it, without being immersed in it, without being stuck in it or, or, or looping. So, you know, sometimes you have um, a thought that, that triggers an emotion and then you go back to the thought again and you're looping now and you're having this terrible thought and this emotion. And so now you're suffering and you're in a state of being and it's very unpleasant and you're struggling to get out of it and it goes, drags on for way too long. Maybe you're angry about something that someone said a year ago and <laughs> you got triggered by it and you're still angry about it and you're sitting there spending two hours on a Sunday afternoon angry and stuck and you can't even turn it off. Mindfulness meditation is developing the ability to observe that, which you can notice, thoughts, emotions, sound, anything. What happens is that when you can, so to speak, remove yourself from the experience and simply notice it, it dissipates very quickly so there's a there's, there's immediate benefits to a meditation in practice i.e you activate the parasympathetic nervous system and you can't you become calm and clear and focused but the longer term benefits when you meditate consistently for years it becomes a superpower you you can change your physiological state like that mm -hmm. you know you can be mm -hmm. in a situation where something happened and you got angry Maybe necessarily, maybe you needed to get angry in that moment. That's great. But you can go from rage to completely calm. It's quite mm. incredible. Or imagine that you have to go and speak at a conference and you're a normal human and so you're nervous, and maybe even suffering anxiety about speaking at this conference. The ability to change your physiological state from anxious and nervous and maybe even struggling to speak to be able mm -hmm. to calm yourself, come to a place of equanimity and then stand up on that stage and share the information you need to share for the room, the ability to change your physiological state like that, that's a superpower. Yeah, you know? and so, <laughs> yeah there's, there's many benefits to a practice of mindfulness meditation. Yeah, it's awesome. It's like uh, it's like a on-off like switch, mental, emotional on-off switch. And, yeah. Uh, it's quite interesting. But you become a you become a much nicer person to be around. You know, you become a better partner and parent and friend and whatever roles you play in your life. You you're a much more pleasant person to be around. Yeah, that was interesting because uh, I, I in residency I, I worked the sometimes I work like the very like the cute trauma and then like just everybody's like pandemonium and then I had to just develop ways of just like staying calm and level-headed when there's this mass hysteria yeah. and this uh, you know aggressive yeah. pee just <laughs> yeah uh, yeah that was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um how can people contact you follow you um check out your work etc if you want to see the stuff that i 
share just on a daily basis, little tips and, and, and you know, video blogs, etc. cetera. I, I post most of my stuff on Instagram daily, and that's just jamfuller, J-E-M. If you want to reach out, get in touch with me, just do it through my website, jamfuller. And, uh, and on, on my website, you can watch my TEDx talk. You can um, reach out to me about my, the retreats that I run in the Himalayan mountains and in Bali. Uh, you can, in, you know, find out about me speaking for for your organization or coaching you or any any of the stuff that i do just reach out through the the contact page at gemful yeah and uh fascinating discussion I, l- I love this idea um all of uh gems resources will be in the links and show notes and uh, uh with that thanks so much for coming onto the podcast yeah chris again thanks for having me on and hey one last minute thing i've got to get better at remembering this i'm just this literally this week in the process of signing a publishing deal with an American publisher based in Miami. Um, and so part of the contract is that I have to mention my book because <laughs> they're publishing my book and, and some yeah. other books coming up. So The Art of Conscious Communication uh, is available on Amazon or Booktopia or anywhere where you want where you purchase books. Um, so please, yeah. if you're interested, um, please go buy the book. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And I, I'm, I'm going to check out the book right after our conversation and uh, be sure to check it out as well. And those links will also be in the show notes as well. And uh, thanks so much. Thanks, Chris.